Hello YouTube. In the year 2018, a Russian scientific expedition went to Evenkia, or rather to Lakes Zapovedne and Cheko. And in particular, they took samples, of course, from the bottom sediments. The goal was to find traces of the Tunguska meteorite in these samples. As we remember, in 1908, a large body flew over Siberia near the Tunguska River exploded, so to say, and caused a massive fall of trees. The power of the explosion is estimated at 40 to 50 megatons, which corresponds to the energy of the most powerful of the detonated hydro hydrogen bombs. If something like this had happened in a more crowded region, there would have been a lot of human casualties, and only a few local event hunters saw the alleged meteorite. Disputes about what actually happened on the Tunguska River are still going on, including due to the fact that over the next uh, few expeditions to this remote region, uh, the main culprit was never found, a meteorite or at least its fragments. Now, please check out my videos about the Tunguska phenomenon. In my opinion, the Tunguska object was an extraterrestrial object a spaceship or an interplanetary uh, space station or something else of the kind that was entering our atmosphere to cause harm. And it was intercepted by the so-called Sentinel in Yakutia, a facility in the permafrost that has protected our planet from the time immemorial. But I'm really interested in the expeditions to the Lake Cheko and to the Lake Zapovedne. I will be blunt, I do not believe we are told everything that is being discovered there. Let me tell you about the most recent expedition to the lakes that began just two days before the Russian attack on Ukraine. Please understand that there has been not an update that I know of about this latest expedition, which in itself is very interesting. So, the small lake Cheko has long been considered uh, the very place where the meteorite fell and which was then filled with water and turned into a lake. The fact is that this lake is suspiciously rounded in shape and it has an unusual conical bottom shape for local lakes. And even before the year of 1929, Lake Cheko was not marked on any map of the region. Lake Cheka was carefully studied by an Italian expedition for several years in the 1990s, but they never managed to find facts. There is any meteor, anything of meteorat, meteoritic nature uh, in that lake. Lake Zapovedne also has the same unusual bottom in the shape of a cone, and there have been rumors about it for some time that it could be a crater from a meteorite. However, Later, it turned out that the uh, Tunguska Reserve uh, itself is at least 2,000 uh, years old, the lake uh, in the reserve. Nevertheless, it is the lake, and um, it's been there for a long time, so this was chosen as the goals of the new expedition. First, let's look at the 2018 expedition. It included experts from the Institute of Biophysics and the Siberian Federal University Krasnoyarsk, the Institute of Geology and Mineralogy, um, the Forest Institute, also Charles University in Prague, Czech Republic, as well as Italian scientists from the National Institute of Astrophysics of Italy and the University of Bologna, also employees of the Tunguska Nature Reserve. They did not find anything unusual in the samples taken from the lake, bottom of Lake Cheko, but samples from the Lake Zapovedne showed very interesting results, despite the fact that this lake is not included in the immediate zone of the Tunguska meteorite, uh, the Lakura River that flows into it, which flows through this zone, and most likely it brought to the bottom of the of that Lake Zapovedna the very meteorite deposits that were found in the samples. Well, that's what scientists uh, suppose. According to geologist Andrei Darin, this thick sediment of Terrigenous matter was washed into the lake during the spring 
snow melts shortly after the meteorite explosion and that if you start to study this particular layer then you can find particles of extraterrestrial origin into in it this layer lay quite shallow only at a depth of 16 centimeters which is quite consistent with the date of the meteor meteorites fall i have to use the word the, the, i mean the, 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 the hypothesis they they say so we will stick to it for now the lake is deep and the bottom sediments in it do not mix but settle exactly one on top of the other and the study in the laboratory found an increased content of potassium titanium rubidium yttrium and zirconium in this light layer according to scientists they know exactly what to look for and where to look in 2018 it was believed that probably in the coming years another expedition would go to lake zapovedna which will take even more samples from this particular layer it is also assumed that other lakes located near near that area of the nature reserve may also contain similar traces okay so we found out in 2022 that the first expedition to the depths of lake Cheko, close to the epicenter of tunguska event that it started in february russian scientists traveled to the remote uh, tunguska or tunguski nature reserve in krasnoyarsk region central siberia at the end of february what was it to accomplish that expedition geophysicists and hydrobiologists would dive 30 meters in what some scientists believe is the impact crater lake Cheko in siberia russia close to the epicenter of tunguska event so end of february 2022 a team of russian scientists would dive below 30 meters in that assumed crater impact crater okay a team of four received a permit to dive below 30 meters this would be the first research at lake Cheko at sites at such depth the winter expedition would start a cycle of long-term research according to Evgenia Karnaukhova the senior inspector at the Tunguska reserve so a cycle of long-term research uh scientists who may include military among them too we just don't know or undercover but let's let's look at lake Cheko is 54 meters deep the team of researchers aim to study how thick the lake bottom sediments are and take primary samples the data they will gather will be analyzed and passed on to geologists we're not speaking about the search of any celestial body at this stage according to young Russian scientist Evgenia Karnaukhova. So the so-called Tunguska event nearly 114 years ago is still a challenge for modern science and the subject of sh sharp disagreement among researchers. One of the key questions since the first expedition led by Soviet mineralogist Leonid Kuk Kulik is, if it was a meteorite, where is the crater and the extraterrestrial matter? So in 2012, a research team from Italia's University of Bologna, led by Luca Gasperini, pointed to a small bowl-shaped 500-meter diameter Lake Cheko as the impact crater. It is located about 8 kilometers from the supposed ground zero of the Tunguska event. If it had not been marked on maps previously, seismic measurements of its bottom indicated that the sediment had been building for around a century and that the depth of the lake which is shaped like a crater was deeper than is typical for the region they also concluded there is a dense stony matter beneath the floor and sediments the remnant of the exploding meteorite according to them so there is a dense matter at the floor very interesting the team reported that seismic reflection and magnetic data revealed an anomaly close to the lake center less than 10 meters below the floor this anomaly was compatible with the presence of a buried stony object and supports the notion uh, Cheko is an impact crater lake they concluded well in 2017 this theory was strongly disputed by russian scientists 
who said the area was badly mapped and there was no surprise Lake Cheko that wasn't on the old maps. Researchers from Krasnoyarsk and Novosibirsk assess the age by analyzing its bottom sediments, undertaking geochemical and biochemical analysis. Well, their colleagues from the Institute of Geology and Mineralogy, Siberian branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences, completed radioscopic analysis of the core samples. The deepest sample they obtained was about 280 years old, which means that the lake was probably even older, because the researchers did not manage to gather samples from the very bottom. So geologically, the lake appears young, but not young enough to be a crater that co was caused by the Tangaska. Besides, there are other practically round lakes in the Tangaska Reserve, uh, which look like Lake Cheko and probably have the same geological origin, said a statement from the Expedition Center of the Russian Ge Geographical Society in the Siberian Federal District. So it looks like the Italians might have gotten onto something. But of course, the Russian scientists, for reasons which could be um, respected, understood, or not, they're trying to hide it. Look, I have the great respect for the Russian Geographical Society, to be sure, for their paranormal research department in St. Petersburg. The society itself works very closely with the Russian military. For example, in the Coral Islands, like Matua, and in the New Arctic policies implementation. You should watch my videos about the corals and the Arctic. Very few people, if any, cover this, and especially UFOs and USOs. You can find information in my book, Russia's USO Secrets, or in my videos, Continuous Research. Do not neglect that part of the world, because things are happening. And I list what I find most interesting. I think there is something else at the bottom of those Tangaska lakes. Perhaps the metals and I listed that they discovered traces of are actually from a man-made or alien-made object and of course not a meteorite. This is a state secret and maybe not only Russia is involved. The war that's going on receives uh, attention and coverage as it should uh, but there are other developments in this world that do not receive the coverage they should get and uh, you know I don't uh, see much uh, brain power among um, uh, most of the reporters and journalists um, active out there and also very few in the West pay attention to such news um, you know, other matters are more important, uh, like the Oscars, you know, things like that, on uh, who wears what, uh, who cheats with him, and so forth. That, that's that's understandable. That's that's the main idea now. I'm a very, I'm a, even very surprised about the war coverage. But anyway, let them not pay attention. There are other people who do. Informed researchers. I include myself. And I will keep my eyes open to what's going on with this expedition, if I can. Because sometimes we don't find out news about such expeditions, as they keep finding more interesting materials. But we will try. If you like my research, please support me uh, through the links you will find in the description to this channel. And I have more interesting videos to bring to you soon. Please subscribe to my channel channel and please tell others. Thank you.